Hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and it's a pleasant Sunday smoke here on my uh, long Thanksgiving weekend. Quite enjoying four days off in a row. Had a nice Thanksgiving, got together with the family, ate a lot of turkey, a lot of pie. Quite enjoyable. I hope all of you, all my American viewers anyway, had a nice Thanksgiving as well. And for those of you in the rest of the world, I hope you had a good weekend as well even if it wasn't a holiday weekend. I am smoking a little bit of Margate in my Peterson. This is a Shape 68 and it's a Sterling Silver series. Nice pipe, works well. I don't usually go for, you know, the full bends like this, but it's not bad. Um, the fact that you can't pass a pipe cleaner when you're smoking it can sometimes be an issue, but it usually smokes pretty dry, so I don't usually have to, have to pass a pipe cleaner. Now that I've said that, I am getting a little bit of a gurgle in this, but I think it can hold for now. I just reviewed Margate, or at least I just recorded my review of Margate, so you can look forward to that posting at some point in the coming week, probably on Wednesday, and that's usually when I try to post new videos. Um, I also just posted my review of my Alden Indie Boots, the 405. So you can check that out if you're interested in fine men's footwear. I posted that review the other day getting a pretty good response for that. And then as has been going on lately, I'm still posting videos in my Let's Play Fallout 4 series. So check those out as well if you have any interest in that kind of thing. I think what I wanna do is show you a little bit of a video I've taken lately or the other day. I live near Whatcom Creek. It's a little stream or a fairly good sized stream actually that runs through the center of town. It's kind of cool because it's a little bit of nature just in the middle of this urban area. And actually there is a salmon run that occurs there every year. It's usually like late October, early November through late December. And it's something that I've always been kind of peripherally aware of but never really paid that much attention. But the other day I was walking downtown and while going over the bridge over this creek, I noticed some seals, little heads bobbing around. And you don't usually see seals so close to town. It's kind of a rarity. So I was quite pleased by this. So I, you know, grabbed my phone and started taking some video or trying to take some video. You know, they'd plunge underwater and then I'm just like, where are they? Where are they? Where are they going to come up again? And then I realized that they were trying to get catch salmon that were coming into the stream. And then looking back a ways downstream, noticed that there were a ton of people fishing and realized, okay, this must be the chum run that goes on chum salmon, which in the Pacific Northwest, we're all kind of salmon snobs here because we get salmon fairly regularly and it's always, you know, Copper River King or Chinook or some of the more, I guess, high-end salmon, you could say. But chum has always kind of been re relegated as kind of like... I, I guess the, the fact of the matter is that usually by the time chum is spawning, the flesh is kind of loose and not as firm. Um, and the males really change when they spawn, you know, all salmon do to a certain degree, but this, the males turn into these tiger stripe, crazy jawed freak monsters. They look really odd and I don't know, they've just always kind of gotten a bad rap, but it is possible to get a really nice chum depending on where, how it's cooked and when, when it was caught and how it was handled. But, uh, anyway. I guess maybe their lack of popular popularity is kind of the reason why they still have some per pretty significant runs in the Pacific Northwest. And so I started taking a little, uh, doing a little filming and it's nothing I prepared for or anything. So it's not a professional documentary of this chum run, but I just thought I'd show you some of the film, uh, some of the video that I took. It's kind of interesting. You'll be able to see a lot of fish, a lot of people fishing. Tried to get some footage of the seals, but wasn't insanely successful with that. But let me roll a little bit of that video for you guys right now. Oh yeah, there was a seal. Oh, really? 
think he just went under the bridge though. Yeah, well, I just ran over to this side because I saw one come in this direction from the other side, from the creek, but... Oh, yeah. watching as the creek flows into the bay here. There's a salmon run going on right now. I think pink perhaps? And there was a seal frolicking around grabbing salmon. I'm hoping I can catch him at some point. I just saw a really big salmon cruising by here in the shallows. Where are you, Seely? Pretty gorgeous day right now. one of the parks that I'm not allowed to smoke in anymore. He's way out there. I'm sure you can't see him at all. I'm trying to zoom in on him, but it's going to be very difficult to see. Come back this way, seal. Come on, seal He went under again. This is kind of exciting for me. I don't normally see seals this close to town. I mean, this creek runs right through the middle of town here. Seely. Oh, Seely. He submerged long ago. It's possible that he could have swam all the way down the creek and out under the bridge into the bay without resurfacing, so who knows if I'll see him again. Just resurfaced. Far away once again. Can barely see the trail left. Looks like he's coming this way though, so hopefully he'll get closer. He or she, I don't know. Not sure, it's hard to tell what species it is. Definitely a seal though, not a sea lion. Come on, buddy. Come on over. You can see there's a seagull right behind it, and then right in front of the seagull, the little seal head's popping up. Oh, it kind of said hello to the seagull as it was driving, driving by, flying by. Come this way. There it is. There's the seal. Hey, buddy. Come over here. Silo. <laughs> what a life. They don't really have anything to worry about around here except the occasional orca, but that's not anywhere near here never get pods of orcas this far into the bay. Pretty much no predators. All you can eat salmon buffet at all times. Well, most times. During the runs anyway. Yep. Oh. Submerged again.
I saw the seal way up the creek now. I guess I've seen enough. Not too shabby. There's what the seals are looking for. Yeah, I know. They're just going to die anyway though, I guess. Yeah. Jump salmon, jump! <laughs> Come on, fish. Whoa! It's got me there. Here's a big one. It's gonna go for it. Ooh! This seems really hard. Lots of people fishing. Seeing people just carrying away giant salmon. Looks like they're being quite as successful as the seal has been, too. Yikes. Yeah, they broke it. They broke it. So. Who broke it? Yeah. Go get a jump. Yeah. <laughs> it's a jumper. How long are these guys running for anyway? For a while. Yeah, about another 30 days probably. Really? About the really? 15th of December. It'll be really slow then. Yeah, it'll be slow and it'll be nasty. Yeah, yeah, they'll you know, start the, getting... At the late, late December, when like, oh, like everybody's done fishing, there's a late run of them. They're still really prone. Okay, grab the tail. That's a big bluff. I think it's too dark to keep anyway. No, that's a see the end of that pipe over there when an angler catches a fish they're not allowed to keep or if they've already caught their limit they throw it in the pipe ends up in this holding tank and then the salmon eventually make their way up into the hatchery this is a managed fishery it's mostly chum salmon it looks like they've grabbed some out for the local food bank here but anyway that's just a little glimpse of the local chum run on Whatcom Creek in Bellingham, Washington. Kind of a cluster F with all the uh, fishermen, fishermen, fisher people. But there are a lot of chum. Seals getting their fill, anglers getting their fill. I think they're only allowed to keep two adults, four juveniles. And the rest eventually make their way up the creek where they will deposit their eggs. That's a lot of fish. And this fishery will last probably until almost the first of the year, late December. 
so I'll have to make a note of coming back here and looking for seals at the creek mouth. Just thought you guys might find that a little bit interesting. Normally I would be smoking a pipe in this park, but it is no longer allowed. So you'll have to content yourself with this fish phantasmagoria. And now back to the regularly scheduled Sunday smoke. Yeah, fishies. Yeah, fishy, fishy, fishy. So there you go. Hopefully you found that kind of interesting. I thought it was pretty cool just to see that mass of fish in such a small area. Kind of interesting. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on today, something that's been kind of on my mind lately in regards to pipe smoking, is relative humidity and smoking a pipe. As most of you know, I live in the Pacific Northwest, Northwest Washington to be exact, and for pretty much the entire year, the relative humidity here is quite high. It's usually at least 80%, often in, into the 90s. Um, it's basically, if it's not raining, it's still 80, 90% humidity. And then when it is raining, there's just always moisture in the air, a lot of moisture in the air. And the exception to the rule, or not the exception to the rule, but the more often than not, there's moisture in the air, but occasionally we'll get a period of dry weather which is what we've been having lately. We got a, uh, a pocket of cool, dry air from the Fraser River Valley in Canada has worked its way over the Pacific Northwest and is being held here by a low pressure system. And that has caused pretty cold temperatures at night. It's getting down into the mid, mid 20s at night and then, you know, 38, 40 degrees is a high during the day and very dry, very, very dry. Don't have much humidity going on at all. You know, my skin's getting all crackly and dry. And the other effect that has is, whereas normally, you know, I'll open a tin of tobacco and I can leave it in the tin for quite some time without it drying out quickly. Now my tobacco tins, if I open it and they're pretty close to the right moisture content, I have to jar them almost right away because there just isn't any humidity in the air right now. And the other effect that has is when smoking, I'm able to have a much drier bowl than usual. And it's something that is worth pointing out because a lot of you will watch my reviews and I'll talk about smoking a particular blend and whether or not it's wet or whether or not it stays lit. But so much of that has to do with the relative humidity of wherever you happen to be at the time. Because as you smoke, the active combustion that's going on in your chamber, you're pulling in air, you're pulling in oxygen from the atmosphere, from the surrounding atmosphere and whatever moisture content is in there as a result of the combustion ends up in your pipe. So right now I'm smoking pretty much completely dry, as dry as it ever gets. And certain blends that may, maybe would smoke wet for me normally under the very humid conditions that I normally experience are now smoking perfectly fine. So just bear in mind whenever you're watching reviews, if you're watching a review from someone who lives in Arizona, maybe their tobacco smokes very dry but it could just be because they live in a very dry place and if you're watching a video from me for instance in a place that's usually quite humid quite moist there's going to be a difference there's going to be just based on your environment a big difference in how certain blends will smoke under certain conditions anyway i just thought that was something interesting worth pointing out Lately, I've been smoking a lot drier. Or my pipes have been smoking much drier than they normally would because the air is very dry at the moment. Anyway, I think that's probably enough for this week's Sunday Smoke. Showed you a little bit of the salmon run, the chum run at Whatcom Creek. Uh, you can definitely look forward to this review of Margate posting soon. Still posting my Fallout 4 Let's Play series. Just posted my review of the Alden 405 Indie Boots check it all out. Give it some thumbs up. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you for leaving comments. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a Pleasant Sunday Smoke. 
I'll see you guys later. Mm-hmm.